All right, how you guys doing? Today we're going to take a look at section 8.4 about rhombus, the rectangle, and squares for our quadrilateral chapter. First thing we got to do is to find what these are. So a rhombus is going to be a very special shape that is all the characteristics of a parallelogram with four congruent sides and the diagonals are going to be perpendicular. Now a rectangle is going to be a parallelogram with two pairs of congruent sides and whose diagonals bisect each other. And then lastly we've got our most special shape which is the square. And the square is going to be have all the characteristics of the rectangle and the rhombus. So we're going to put these to the test but before we do that we've got to take a look at a couple of theorems. Most textbooks will include these theorems about diagonals in their explanation. One of the theorems that some textbook books will have goes something like this. Parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. Now here's this little symbol which is the parallelogram symbol. So instead of writing out the word parallelogram you could just draw this little symbol that looks like a parallelogram next to the letters. Parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus if and only if AC is perpendicular to BD. So let's draw a picture of what that would look like. And there we go. So that would be a picture that would represent that situation. Now another theorem says that a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles. Now this will give us a picture that looks like this. For parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus if and only if AC bisects angle DCA and angle DAC and DB bisects the other two angles, angles ABC and angle CDA. So notice how your diagram is marked because that's what happens in a rhombus. And then lastly we can say that a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if the following is true. If its diagonals are congruent then a parallelogram is a rectangle. So now we've got this picture here that would represent that situation. So those are three specific theorems about diagonals and different textbooks give them different numbers so I'm not going to bother to number them here. Now for our first example we've got to figure out for this rhombus QRST decide whether the statement is always or sometimes true. Now what I want to do is draw a picture of my rhombus and I'm going to label each one of my angles Q, R, S, and T. Now like a parallelogram opposite angles are always going to be congruent so Q and S are always going to be congruent. So in this situation for part A, this is always going to be congruent. Angle Q and angle S. Now here's where it gets a little tricky because if you take a look at angles Q and R, most people want to draw another picture like the one on the left. But instead I'm going to suggest this picture. Say we have a picture that looks like this and we know that opposite angles have to be congruent. So say angle Q is a right angle which means angle S would be a right angle. Now another property about parallelograms is that consecutive angles have to be supplementary which means angle R would also have to be a right angle and so would angle T. So if I have all four angles are right angles then angle Q and angle R would be congruent. So this is sometimes the case. Not always, just sometimes, if one of my angles is a right angle. Now for this picture we've got to figure out which one of these three our figure is. Is it a rhombus? Is it a rectangle? Is it a square? Well one of my angles is 70 degrees and I see that all four sides are the same. Now if all four sides are the same that's going to rule out the rectangle. So the rectangle can't be you. Now one of my angles is 70 which means it couldn't be a square because in a square all right angles are 90 degrees. Since all four sides are the same that tells me that this must be a rhombus. So to write a sentence that explains our reasoning we could simply say something like this. Since we have a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and no right angles our figure must be a rhombus. There's other ways to say it and this is just one. Now for our last piece in this example it says sketch rectangle ABCD list everything we know about it. So first let's get a rectangle drawn. Now most people when they draw a rectangle their first thing that they want to do is put right angles everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So there we go. 
our figure has four right angles. Now there's several other things that we know about it, and one of the things that we would talk about would be about opposite sides. What do you know about opposite sides in a rectangle? Well, they're going to be congruent. So we've got the four right angles, we've got opposite sides that are congruent, but one of the other things we've got to think about is that a rectangle is a type of parallelogram, which means all the characteristics of the parallelogram apply to the rectangle. So opposite sides are not only congruent, they are also parallel. There's two things about angles for parallelograms. So the two things that we know from that are that opposite angles are congruent and the consecutive angles are supplementary. Now there's one other thing about parallelograms. Do you remember what it was about their diagonals? What happens to diagonals in parallelograms? Yes, that's right. They bisect each other. And not only do they bisect each other, we also know that by the definition of a rectangle, the diagonals, they're congruent. So those are all the things we've got to be able to list about any given rectangle. So that's a lot of stuff for this section, but I'm sure you got it. We'll practice this to make sure that you guys have all these characteristics down in class, and you'll rock this stuff out. All right, that's it for this. Peace out.